Hello and welcome to Hands-on Scikit Learn for Machine Learning. My name is Farhan Zaidi and I have a background in software architecture, data engineering and what you call in computer science as systems. I have been developing a lot of distributed systems, data intensive systems and applications and I have been using Scikit Learn for about 3 years now and I have seen it grow from a small library to a very large collection of highly useful functions and modules which have immense utility in machine learning for engineers for building even medium to large scale machine learning systems now. I work as a consultant and a solutions developer and I have also been involved in projects that involve microservices and data engineering. Let's have an overview of our course. In section 1, we are going to get started by developing a simple model with scikit-learn we are going to state course objectives in detail, our approach to learning, details of the prerequisites, what you need to know, and the tools we will use and how to install them. And we will apply a simple model with scikit-learn. Section 2 will be about classification models. In this, we will introduce ourselves to linear and logistic regression and also discuss the performance metrics for classification problems. We will also discuss models like SVM, random forest classifier on image data, performance measurement methods like ROC curve, AUC curve, confusion matrix and so on. In section 3 we will cover regression models. We will apply regression models on a housing data set. We will deal with missing values, categorical features, linear regression, mean squared error and other methods for evaluation of regression models like the R squared error. We will also cover adding polynomial features, elastic net, random forest regressor and also gradient boosting regressor. Section 4 will be about unsupervised learning and specifically the use of unsupervised learning for dimensionality reduction. Here we will deal with principal component analysis or PCA. We will also cover non-linear methods for feature extraction, specifically TSNE and ISOMAP. And finally, we will apply dimensionality reduction techniques on images. Section 5 will be about clustering, which is another form of unsupervised learning. We will introduce ourselves to clustering and k-means clustering. Then we will also cover agglomerative or hierarchical clustering. Section 6 is about feature engineering and hyperparameter tuning. Here we will go into much more details of pre-processing like identifying missing values, data cleaning, scaling, outlier detection, converting numerical to categorical, determining feature importance, model performance improvement with hyperparameter tuning and grid search and random search to find the best hyperparameters. We we'll look at APIs like cross well score, k fold, stratified k fold, shuffle split, grid search, CV, recursive feature elimination. So, there will be a lot of model selection and tuning performance improvement going on. Section 7 will be about creation of pipelines and advanced techniques for model selection. Here we will cover creating processing pipelines with scikit learn, practice with pipelines and feature engineering on a time series data set and so on. And finally, section 8 will be about text analysis with scikit-learn. Here we will cover bag of words model, sentiment analysis on the IMDB movie reviews dataset, removing stop words, TF, IDF, vectorization, using n-grams, finally topic modeling with truncated SVD and latent Dirichlet allocation which is a technique for topic modeling. So this was a very quick review of what's to come next. Hopefully you've got some idea of the breadth of topics that we're going to cover here and all using scikit-learn APIs. The prerequisites we need from your side is just an intermediate knowledge of Python. What we mean by intermediate, please see the details in the next video. Specifically, I'm going to mention a few things in the next video that you should know about. A familiarity with NumPy and Pandas Python libraries, which are very commonly used libraries for creating data sets, dealing with matrices and structured data. Uh, you should at least have a basic familiarity with them. 
I'll go through all the APIs that I'm using and you might be able to pick most of it if you even don't know NumPy and Pandas well enough. But if you are familiar with it, it would certainly help. Basic familiarity with machine learning terms like what is supervised learning, unsupervised learning and so on. What is train test split and some other terms like that. What does performance evaluation means? Well, again, it's helpful if you know these terms. It will be easier for you to get through the course and learn at a quicker pace. But it's not essentially required. So you can pick up the basic terms as you go along. So you'll probably have to work a little bit harder and most important no knowledge of scikit-learn is needed. So you don't have to have prior knowledge of scikit-learn. The last thing before we get started this course is all about hands-on and practical aspects. We'll be performing a lot of line by line code walkthroughs. We'll be doing a lot of detailed code explanations at the end of the course you would feel really comfortable diving deeper and getting your hands dirty with machine learning code. That won't be a problem if you go through this course thoroughly. A very important last point is that we will not be going into deep mathematical and theoretical aspects of models and algorithms in this course because number one, we simply don't have the time. Number two, it's not in our scope. The focus is how to use scikit-learn in the best possible way to quickly get started with machine learning in a hands-on manner, in a practical manner so that you are able to do some real world projects, experiment and work on real world data sets as fast as possible. Because we'll be using a lot of real world data sets mainly from Kegel in this course. If you want to go into deep mathematical concepts and equations and formulas and models and all that and mathematical terminologies, there are a lot of really great resources and machine learning books out there. You can just go through them and probably this course will enable you to understand those concepts and go into deeper mathematical rigor easier than before. So that's all I can say. So with this in mind, let's get started. So see you in the next video.